Hey everybody, I hope you're well. Today I'm going to be talking about Apex Legends Legacy. Thanks to EA Game Changes, I did get to play it early and there will be a premiere going live on my channel very soon. So make sure to notify yourself on that because the we can't show gameplay yet, but we will be able to uh, later this week. Either way, I'm going to react to this trailer and talk about my experience with arenas, Valkyrie and everything. So let's just jump into it. They've got like this little intro where they're talking about Icarus, which we'll learn about very soon. Initializing bonsai hillside segment removal. Bonsai hillside segment removal complete. Initializing cliff overlooking box assembly. Okay, what's really cool about this? Sorry, I gotta pause it. What's happening? I think is because Olympus is like a city. It's like a. Uh, how to explain it? All of the parts of Olympus can be like detached and removed and added to. So what's happened is the ship, right, um, that we saw in the teaser yesterday has crash landed into Olympus and they've removed an area of Olympus and the ship has docked there. It's called the Icarus and it's going to be the new point of interest for uh, Olympus. So pretty exciting. Looking docks lockdown confirmed. Error. Terraformation gap detected. Initializing Geoscan. Geoscan complete. Initializing Sector Shift in Solar Array. Okay. Complete. Terraformation. Oh. Authorizing landing. Landing authorized. Greetings, crew of the Icarus and its fleet. You are clear for docking. Welcome to Olympus. <laughs> Alright, here's the trailer. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Ooh. Alright, first thing. Yes, there's a Rampart Battle Pass Legendary skin, which I'm hyped for. The Battle Pass skins in this are so cool. Uh, yeah, so you definitely want to stay tuned for the Battle Pass trailer. They are so, like, for real, they're really good. This is one of the, uh, let's just watch it. Let's watch it first, shall we? Of course, there's a new Arenas mode. Knowledge is power, but what you do with it, that's what's important. I think Ash will do a better explanation than me, so we'll listen to her for a second. The games are where the champions are crowned, but the arenas are where legends are made. I said danger close. Once you listen, the arenas are my games. They're not about fame or spectacle. They are about the fight. Arkstar! The rules are simple. It's just your squad and their squad. Adios, champ. Whoever survives wins. Now pay attention. This is how the game is played. Assemble your squad in the customary fashion. Before the fight begins, squads are enclosed in their spawn room and have access to the shop. Here you can purchase weapons, items, and abilities with craft. I just gotta say here, this is like a little bit different to what the UI actually looks like. Um, it's 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 a lot different actually. It's very similar, but I just noticed like some of the icons are different. You can't buy an ultimate accelerant. That's strange. Crafting materials. I will grant you a set amount of materials at the start of each round. You may earn more through your performance. Materials can be used immediately or saved for superior equipment later in the match. No purchased gear follows between rounds. Wait, where's all my stuff? So this is really interesting, right? So this is a 3v3 game mode um, that's round-based and has an economy like CSGO and Valorant, right? Um, you both start, both teams start with a pretty small amount of money. You could buy like a wingman or a P2020 with an optic and a light mag or maybe a shield bat and just standard P2020. Like you don't have much to go off for the first round, right? And then you have sort of uh, three ways to make money in this game. The one first way is you get a bit of money every time you get a kill. Uh, the second way is you just passively earn money as each round goes on. 
And the third way, and the most important, is there are some crafting bins around the map. A very small amount, so it's going to be these are going to be contested spots. And these give 200 crafting materials each for every one player on your team. And they can only be collected once, so you can't, you can't have both teams collect that. So um, the most interesting thing about this game mode is if you win a round, you don't actually keep your gear, and you don't really get like uh, an economy economical bonus over the other team and the reason for that is arenas is meant to be like a shorter experience as opposed to like valorant and counter strike those games can last for like 45 minutes this is much faster paced uh it's the uh first two three wins but actually the way it works is it's the first team to have a round lead of two above their opponent and then once they get one more win after that they win the game but in total there's only a maximum of nine rounds, so things are pretty quick. And if people could just snowball, if teams could snowball their economy really early, then it would be pretty boring. So this way, for people who've played CSGO and Valorant, it seems really weird, but it actually works really well. And, and the meta, I kind of see it evolving around being very careful with what you're spending and also collecting the resource bins, like competing and contesting for the, uh, the material bins, because... You're going to need those to build a stronger economy over the enemy team because the enemy team could win the first round. But if your team gets all of the crafting bins on that first round, you're going to end up going into round two with more money than the other team is. And the most important thing is nobody keeps their gear. So you have to rebuy it every single round. So it's, it's an interesting thing. You may think it seems like a bad idea, but it actually works really well considering the, the length of these uh, these games. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I only managed to play it for a few hours. Give it like a few weeks and we'll see probably quite an interesting meta evolve around that. Let's keep watching. Materials can be used to upgrade weapons, making you an even greater threat. At the end of the buy phase, the shields drop and the fun begins. Both teams engage in combat until one side is wiped out. Downed teammates can still be oh. revived. So this is, yeah, this is the lifeline uh, sort of nerf. She's got a nerf, the revive shield's gone, but her ultimate has actually been buffed a lot now. It gives you guaranteed upgrades to the gear you actually have instead of just random gear. So if you have, say, a vault with purple barrel, purple stock, all purple attachments and purple armor, then two items in there are going to be golden upgrades and it's going to keep upgrading your team until you're fully all gold and then at that point it will just give you more meds so and it always seems to give you one phoenix kit so the other two items are like upgrade and some meds and then one slot is just a phoenix kit from what i've tested so far engage in combat until one side is wiped out downed teammates can still be revived but in this game there are no respawns use the pressure it's the only way to survive. Supply bins containing consumables and material canisters are scattered throughout the arena. I don't want to like give too much info about like what the meta is, what you should be doing, what you should be playing. I released a video about like sort of tips and tricks, but yeah, I think that it's going to be fun for all of you to kind of go in there and just feel feel it for yourself and learn it on day one because yeah, there's a lot of fun in this game mode, and I I think that. Obviously, if people are diehard Battle Royale fans, they're not going to be too interested in this, but it's a really refreshing way to play Apex and just get into the fights and not worry about trying to loot or third partying or waiting around in the dropship. Like, it's, it's, it's quick. You get into fights quick. Three weapons arrives in the middle of each round. The tier of the weapons in the drop pod increases from round to round. Use them to overpower your competition. It's high risk. High reward. Maybe next time? You should try it. Yeah, this is one of the better pass skins. Really score, cool. Three victories with a two win margin will be declared the champion. If teams battle to a deadlock 4 4 tie, round nine is my favorite part. Sudden death. Dotting up some amped cover. Knock down more than a few. Each arena has its own personality and acts as an optimal combat testing ground. The phase runner on Olympus wasn't the first of its kind. A prototype long abandoned rests in a remote section of Talos, 
This is like the biggest map at the moment. It's not that big, but it is the biggest one. There's a research afoot. And then, of course, uh, I turn me him. Coma was simply another Outlands hotspot turned yesterday's news until an ill fated joyride gave it a new landmark. You're welcome. With my assistance, the city has been reignited with a new monument to incompetence. Thank you for this. I feel much better about myself now. I have also secured some viable locations throughout the Outlands to serve as arenas. So we're told on uh, day one, we're going to be getting the Party Crashes map, which is the Mirage one. The um, <clears throat> Phase Runner one, which is actually like, yeah, it's the same planet as World's Edge, but it's not actually part of World's Edge map, if that makes sense. And also uh, the oh God artillery part of King's Canyon. And then there'll be a couple more added later, as we just saw here, gardens and thermal station. And don't get too comfortable. The future promises to be a bit... Fiery. I think someone's here. Valkyrie. Oh, yes. By the way, I, I've got so much to talk about, so <laughs> we'll get through this trailer and then I'll go back and share my first impressions and everything. A new legend has joined the fight. This little one and I share a common legacy. Pilot blood runs through her veins. This is Valkyrie. Sending down Hellfire. She is as fearless as she is reckless. Friend or foe, make sure you look up as she takes the fight to the skies. Your journey ends here, Legends. The skies belong to me now. She has some cool quips. are the ultimate test of skill and resolve. So I have a gift. The Bocek Compound Bow. This precision weapon requires patience and In arenas, this thing is kind of ridiculous. It is made even deadlier with its two hop-up slots. Legends can combine shatter caps, splitting the arrow tip into a shotgun pattern. And dead eyes tempo, allowing a faster draw when firing at the optimal pace. Master all of this, and you will become a true assassin. You gotta take risks to be champ. The need to prove superiority is instinctive. Hopefully, you can impress me. I'll see you in the arenas. In the arenas. Oh, here's the map update. Multiple unknown ships entering secure space. All personnel, please secure docking stations and prepare for arrival. Security forces on full alert. Strap in, Muti. Things are about to get mighty interesting. Okay, so <laughs> first things first, it looks like Olympus is about to be blown to pieces, but thankfully it's not. There's just one point of interest, the Icarus in between Bonsai and uh, Orbital Cannon. It's a really big point of interest, and it's definitely given more like play area on that side of the map. Really, really good change. The rest of the map's pretty much the same, so don't you worry. Right, so we've got a lot to talk about. First, let's kind of talk about um, arenas, right? So Arenas is going to start with three uh, maps to begin with. There's not going to be a ranked mode, but they do want to bring that in the future. Um, but there is a pretty cool badge where you can uh, like track your win streaks on it, which is pretty cool. Like The highest win streak you have will be displayed on the badge. So what happens is both teams start. You buy a very small amount of gear, like as you can see here, you have 550 at the beginning. Like you could buy a wingman, you could buy a peacekeeper. Oh, by the way, peacekeeper is floor loot this season. Uh, and it, the triple take, surprisingly, has replaced the peacekeeper. So that's pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. But I have to say, like from what I played, this game is... The game mode is sort of a little bit slower paced than some of the fights you'd normally get in battle royale now i don't know if that's just because it's new and everyone's kind of trying it out but this game mode is going to be all about sort of contesting areas holding sight lines you know playing with your team well it's definitely going to appeal more to the tactical shooter fan people who like csgo and valorant are going to like this more it's not as like focused as those two are not as tactical you can still run around and use your mobility abilities very freely but 
you are going to be punished if you just run around like crazy um you know so it's very interesting very unique very tense if you have two good teams like battling it out and it goes to the wire it's very very tense and basically because the the economy is like based on the fact that as each round goes by it gets you get more and more gear available to you and it becomes more tense you know each round both teams kind of gain the same amount of uh, economical benefit regardless of who lost or won before but you can still beat the other team by making the right choices by not like overpicking loot by fighting for the supply bins to get enough meds so you're not wasting money on the meds loba is a really good legend because you can just put down your ult and take all the meds like just steal them from a, uh, the other players and then uh, spread them out to your team evenly um, so yeah, you got to really play the map and, and play for control of these important areas. And that's probably what's going to help you win. And obviously, when things start, it's just going to be hectic. But I, I do think the meta will slowly shift towards that. And another thing is, because of the different play style and the fact that you have to buy abilities, the, the meta is different, right? The meta is different. Mobility legends aren't so important. You don't need to reposition for the ring. You don't need intel to know when the next ring is. In super high level play, I don't really know exactly how it's going to be. But i got to say, legends like Gibraltar and Rampart are going to be more better off. Because they can peak angles, hold angles safely. Which is something no other legend can do. Defensive legends aren't really massively that great. But it's hard to say. I will say... Um, a good strategy I found is taking like a legend of a good hitbox and just strafe spamming with the wingman because it's probably cheap. Um, some weapons probably need to be like a bit rebalanced. Like the bow right now is really powerful because when you buy it, you get both hop ups and you can basically spam fire. And when you get a headshot with this thing, so the, the way it works is you have to hold down your aim. And as you do that, you pull the bow string back and the further it goes back, the more damage it will do. A maximum of like 120 in the head. But with the Dead Eyes Tempo hop up, if you perfect the flow of fire so that you fire it as soon as it's perfectly drawn back, the next shot will be drawn back faster and faster. It will reach a max speed, but it can fire pretty fast and it can be pretty deadly. Um, so what you'll probably see is people kind of holding angles with this bow and you're just suddenly taking a load of damage out of nowhere. But I think a quick balance change would be to just um, change the value of how much it costs. And I, I think that's one thing that's really important as well is that the legend meta isn't as important in this. I think the weapon meta and, and the weapon uh, sort of uh, counters are going to be more important. So let's say someone takes the bow, right? Um, well, you can counter that with like a scout because the scout fires faster. You just got to hold the angle right. Someone takes a charge rifle, then you can take some close range weapons and push them hard because the charge rifle is really expensive. Um, so you know that that player is not really going to have any good gear unless it's super late game. It's really, really interesting. Uh, there's so much to talk about, and I'll definitely get into more videos in the future about this. But um, another thing, let's talk about Valkyrie, right? Veruca has some really interesting abilities. She has quite a lot going on. Uh, let's see if we can find a little image of her somewhere over here. I think we actually need to go back a bit. <clears throat> Valkyrie, where are you? By the way, I don't know what this Octane skin is. This must be for like a future event or something because it's not in the Battle Pass as far as I remember. Oh, where's Valkyrie? Valkyrie, Valkyrie. Is it really this late? Okay, okay, th this will do. So, Valkyrie has three passive abilities. Her main passive ability is the VTOL Jets. This allows her to fly in the air. She uses her jetpack. She, if she holds down jump in the air, she can literally fly upwards into the sky really high. She can strafe back and forth as well. And that sounds ridiculously overpowered, right? But it has a ton of drawbacks. And it is actually, they've put a lot of balancing in. And I have to say that... It's not going to be as powerful as Horizon at launch. I think she's going to be very powerful, but not as powerful as Horizon. And the reason for that is her strafing speed midair is really slow. Her jetpack speed is really slow. She's kind of like, imagine like a butterfly through the air instead of like swinging around like crazy. So she's a pretty easy target to hit if you, she's just flying in the air, right? Second thing is, unlike in the gameplay trailer, or uh, the launch trailer, you cannot fire your weapons as Valkyrie whilst using your jetpacks. You have to deactivate the jetpacks. There's a short delay. 
and then you can fire. So you can fire midair, but only after you're like falling back down to the ground. The viability of it is limited, you know? You're not like Horizon being able to strafe back and forth like crazy on a gravity lift uh, with a Spitfire and spam. So that's good. Really good repositioning ability, but you are quite vulnerable. There's also a limited amount of fuel with it. Um, every time you activate it, you get a small boost in the direction you're moving. And that takes a big chunk of fuel. And then as you hold it down, the fuel keeps trickling down as well. And then once it's run out, you fall down to the ground and you have to wait for it to charge back up again. Uh, she also has another passive. When she's skydiving, at any form of skydiving, she has a unique UI and she actually highlights any enemies in her line of sight. And this applies to just uh, both her and her team. So it's sort of like a Bloodhound scan but it's not through walls uh, and there's a certain limit on it. But it's a really good way to like uh, when you leave the ship, see where people are really landing or redeploy in an area and see, um, you know, where people are sitting around. But yeah, it doesn't go through walls or anything. And that kind of pairs with her ultimate because her ultimate is uh, Skyward Dive and she activates her jets again. Your teammates can then attach to you if they choose and then you can press another button once they've activated it to fly into the sky and redeploy like using a redeploy balloon there's a ton of delay if you get shot whilst doing this your ultimate will just cancel and you'll lose it so you need to do it somewhere safe and the tactical is the missile swarm that we saw it's like 12 missiles they can do like once you get caught in the missile swarm you do like 25 to 40 damage to serve as arenas. see if we can get a little look at it here and don't get too comfortable. The future promises to be a bit. Here it is. So th this is the missile swarm. Uh, it does cover a fairly large area. And if you pair it with a jetpack, you're going to get a good overhead view. And you can fire it really far. And it stuns people. Like It's like a, let's say like half the effect of an arc star. Or maybe even less effective as an arc star. But it does stun them a little bit. So it does like 25 to 40 damage. Stuns them. Really good way to like create a push. Uh... I think compared with the passive, it's pretty strong. So at the gate, I would say she's definitely going to be an A-tier legend. I don't know if she's going to be like super overpowered. Uh, she's not like Horizon. She's not annoying to play like Horizon because she has counters. She has weaknesses. Um, it's so good that you can't actually use your ability, uh, your weapons whilst using the jetpack. But you can use the tactical. So what else is there to talk about? I mean, we have the bow check bow as well. Super strong. There's a few balance changes. Low profile is gone, which is super good. Watson, Wraith, and Lifeline will be getting a nice buff. Horizons, Gravity Lift has actually been nerfed quite a lot. Uh, the strafing on there is pretty bad now, but I think that's a much needed change. And um, yeah, everything else I'm going to be covering in a video on the 29th, uh, a bunch of videos. So just stay subscribed. Check out the premiere. It'll be live on this channel very soon. Stay notified on that. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Cheerio.